I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. And this is Just Might DIY. As we DIY our way through our wedding, one thing we really wanted was a beautiful way to store and display our wedding rings, both for those like awesome flat lay photographs you do on the day of, but also just a beautiful place to keep them when we're not wearing them. Now my overall affection for bees and everything bee alike has led us to using a lot of hexagonal designs to prepare for our wedding, including the making of these beautiful ring display boxes. And since we're using a little bit of an odd shape, of course we went right to the Glowforge to make these. Just some wood, acrylic, and a few other materials allowed us to create these beautiful ring boxes. Absolutely. So, let's get busy. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get on with the making of the structure of the box. Uh, what we're using is a quarter inch maple that you can only get online at Home Depot. We are also maskers. <laughs> it's a statement of what we like to put on wood. <laughs> and we will be masking both sides of this. And of course, we do only actually need one piece for this project. So we have about an inch difference between the outside and the inside that we're gonna cut. You can pause and see our measurements here. We will tell you for the holes for these particular magnets, they were 0.22. Now before we show you exactly our settings, we're of course gonna put the wood inside the Glowforge. And now that we can see it, we have 10 total layers. We have two that have magnet holes on them and then the bottom is solid and top is a little bit thicker. For our settings, we have, for our speed for the engraving, we have 350, 50 power, and 340 LPI. When we go to cut, we have a speed of 180 and full power. Now, we're gonna go ahead and make that magic happen. This actually is pretty quick. It's only about eight and a half minutes to do engraving and cutting of all of this, but you know, obviously we're gonna speed through this just a little bit. You don't <laughs> need to watch eight and a half minutes of laser. That's right. But we are actually having to unmask it. It only makes sense when you do mask things, you have to unmask it. And we're making sure that all of the sides kind of look the same so we have the alignment that we're looking for before we start our glue up. We are gonna use some wood glue here because we are gluing wood. It totally makes sense. This is uh, logic at its best. <laughs> And I'm actually just going to use a tiny little paintbrush and I'm going to apply thin layers to both sides of whatever we're trying to adhere. So just make sure that you keep the alignments the way you care to see them. We're not using a super glue with this. We don't want that immediate tack. We actually want to be able to finesse them into their straight edged sidedness as much as possible. And the super glue would prevent that. That's right. And we say that because in the past we've used a super glue wood glue combo to get that immediate clamp in case you missed that reference. These two little rectangles that you see at the bottom right of your screen is actually something that we use to try and erect the sides, try and smash them so that they are as smooth as we can actually get them. You'll see you doing that right about now. <laughs> this really does help us keep those straight edges. And now this is where you can really see where that top layer is just a little bit thicker than the normal sides. And that's to give us a lip for the acrylic, which you'll see how that works shortly. And of course, we're only gluing those two together. We're not gluing those to the rest of the box. And we did want to make sure that our magnet holes aligned and that everything was perfectly in alignment. So once we have all that together, we get to use those rectangles for a second purpose. That is re-squaring it up and then using these tiny little clamps and those as the um, superficial grab on it. There you go. Yeah, uh, maybe not, <laughs> who knows. Words. <laughs> but they are also used for sanding. We want to make sure that the, the angles of the hexagon are sharp and this will prevent us from rounding our corners and also give us a flat edge to work with. So as you see, having those extra rectangles really did come in handy. We did lots of sanding on this because we really wanted that stain to go on beautifully. And sometimes masking can pull up some fibers on the wood. So we sanded the sides, tops, and bottoms of both the bottom and the top. Once all that was done, we of course wiped off all the sanding dust and then we're using an early American stain, which is just a really nice golden color that doesn't have a lot of orange to it. 
So we wipe that on and we are using these little risers so we can stain everything top, bottom, sides, inside at one time. And so we let that set while we moved on to uh, making the uh, acrylic insert for the lid. This is proof grade quarter inch clear acrylic that you just put in your glow forge, close the lid, and it says, hey, I know what that is. <laughs> We're using a very simple design, just some words to engrave, and since it's proof grade, we're using the SD graphic settings, but we do increase the LPI, because we want a pretty solid engrave on this. As you can see, we did this a few times, because one time we forgot to change our cut setting, uh, but of course it is a proof grade cut as well, and it only takes... Five minutes. But again, we're going to speed this up for you. What? But I thought they wanted to see five minutes of laser. <laughs> Nobody wants to sit there and watch that. Though they are quite cool. So of course this does come pre-masked and so we just need to peel off the masking from the outside and pick it out of the little insides of the letters and that is how it turned out. We're going to clean it with some alcohol to make sure all the human and adhesive is removed from it mm -hmm. before we use JB Super Weld. We like using this glue, especially when we're doing mixed media, like wood to acrylic or wood to metal or something like that. It's just a really solid glue. And so again, we're using a paintbrush because we don't want this to squeeze out at all because we would see that on the acrylic. We're gonna hold that in place. And then after it cures overnight, we're ready to move on to the next step. So these are the tiny little magnets that we'll be using to secure the lid in place. Now uh, these are tiny, it's gonna be really kind of hard to see what I'm doing with these, but I am separating them into pairs and I'm moving them far enough apart where they just don't snap back together. We're going to stick with the JB Super Weld Fury and start by just inserting one half of each pair of the magnets, well, two of these sets. Mm -hmm. Once I have the first two in place, I'm gonna use a little bit of masking to tape over them so I can test to make sure that our alignment is correct. And weld those into the lid. And when he says really keep the alignment in check, it's about the polarization, right? You wanna make sure that the magnets attract and not repel. And the tape helps those others while they're not quite set yet with the glue stay in place while we do that. And we did reverse this bottom one because we wanted this lid to only fit one way. But now we gotta make the foam inserts. Since we're custom making this, there's so many different ways that we can do this. We actually drew out a few different hexagons to decide how we wanted the rings to sit in the box. Of course, you can do the straight one, which we do end up doing one of those, but we wanted something else that was also pretty cool, and Daniel came up with uh, quite a few options. Absolutely, I sure did. Not that one on the bottom right. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> But we really kind of like the two that ended up on the left. Uh, we felt like that was like a really nice way to represent them in the box and keep them nice and visible. So now we're gonna use one inch upholstery foam. I can't remember where we got this, but we'll link something similar down below from Amazon. And we're going to go ahead and... Cut it out with scissors. And of course you can see that the, that hexagon that we used was one of the inside cuts of the pattern we had cut out so it's perfectly sized and it's actually the one from the lid because that one's a little smaller you do want to undersize your foam just a little bit because you're going to wrap this in fabric and you don't want it to be so tight that everything wrinkles inside so we're going to cut it out slightly smaller round the edges and then test to make sure that it slides in nice and easy compensating for the idea that there will be extra thickness with fabric Pulling out the ruler and the marker, we're trying to make nice even marks for how we want to see the pieces and the rings held in place. And again, pull out those scissors. And once we have all of the cuts, we will bevel the edges just a little bit, make the transitions of fabric smooth. And once we get there, we see that, uh, you know. We like. The, yeah, it's a puzzle. <laughs> Once we get there, we see that we really like the fit, but now we need to draw a pattern. So we need a template to cut out our fabric to make sure that it covers the tops and bottoms, or sorry, the tops and sides, not the bottoms. <laughs> 
So I'm making a generic pattern that uh, might be a slight bit oversized. We were okay with it being oversized because anything extra can be trimmed. Mm -hmm. But you see, we're just rolling it around, making sure that all of the lengths of it are appropriately accommodated for. Mm -hmm. And then once we do that, we're using a velvet fabric. So we're going to flip it over and we attach the patterns to the back with some double-sided tape. And then we're going to go in and trim to the patterns. Again, these are slightly oversized, so we can trim once we actually get the pieces and we start gluing. Um, but we cut all of these out and we'll just show you one of the glue ups. For the main center, we put the glue on the top first and then we went in and put the glue on the sides of the fabric after that and then we held it in place. This doesn't have an immediate hold so you do kind of have to hold it and let it um, tack. tack itself. That's right. Now we let these sit for 48 hours before we put them inside the ring box and that's so we wanted the glue to fully cure and not wrinkle once it got some tension on the fabric. Now, once it's in the box and it all looks great on that aspect, we put what would be our rings into it, close the lid, and say, ooh. Yay, swoon. <laughs> so this is how this one turned out, and it is just gorgeous. We did do one with the straight rings in it and had like a nice little floral wreath on the side of it. Um, but as you can see, the possibilities are endless, and these are just gorgeous. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few little tricks to make your own ring boxes on a Glowforge. And don't forget, if you're in the market for a Glowforge, we have a referral link in the description, which will give you up to $500 off your purchase as well as give us a little something in return. So if you like the video, you should give it a thumbs up, subscribe, ring <laughs> the bell. <laughs> And of course, if you have any comments, uh, the comment box is a good place to put that. And anything that we use to do this is listed down in the description. Also in the description are links to all of our social handles. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out our blog at JustMightDIY.com. Thanks for watching.